David Williams with Jesus Ministries. Glad you're able to watch today's video. We're going to be talking about a very, very important and dear topic to the heart of God. Specifically, we're going to be talking about just how God does stuff. I mean, honestly, there's a video that's coming out, a movie that's coming out. It's the fourth installment of the Finger of God spirituality, Christian spirituality series of miracles, the miraculous love of God, authored, produced by a man named Darren Wilson. Personally, I own the first three installments of it, but there was a trend that was in the first finger of God, miraculous documentary. I mean, I suppose that's weird, the way that I would call it. And then I began to notice, I began to notice that toward the middle, almost maybe about 45 minutes into the documentary, there was a trend that is very, very prevalent in the present day church. Now, that trend is the love of God without the truth of God. The affection, when I say the love of God, I'm talking about the affectionate aspect of God as opposed to the holistic truth of God because the same God that created heaven also designed hell and told us that most people would go there and we have to understand why most people go to hell why most people don't answer into the joy of the Lord so Darren Wilson makes this film and he, he chronicles the miraculous he goes and he follows different men and women of God internationally and he chronicles their work for Jesus Christ and some of you may not be okay with some of those things whether it be the gold dust or be it the jewels and things of that nature even though you know uh, there is no scripture that invalidates God manifesting jewels in your presence or gold dust or his or the fragrance of the Spirit of God you know the, the Holy Ghost does a number of things but we're talking about so we're not gonna get into that today because it would not it would be it wouldn't be a fruitful argument because the you know the word of God is pretty clear on, on the on the miraculous works of Jesus Christ and some people are just afraid of it they don't know what it is uh, and they don't know how to handle it so they just debunk it all together but also too we can't negate the fact that there are many lying lying signs and lying wonders out there as well so there's a real move of the spirit there's a false move of the spirit the Holy Spirit and the word of God together the Spirit of God, the Word of God together allow us to understand the truth of Jesus Christ. And that's really where I want to take this video message today. We want to talk about specifying what spirituality is all about. In case you didn't know, spirituality is all about an individual. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the merging of the Spirit, the truth, the knowledge, the love, the power, the wrath, the fullness of God. In Jesus, we have the fullness, we have the complete picture of who God is, what God wants, what God does. So, in this fourth installment entitled Holy Ghost, the first one was Finger of God, the second one was Furious Love, the third one is Father of Lights. Father of Lights really took that darker turn. By darker, I'm specifying, it began to abandon the fundamental doctrine Jesus Christ taught and revealed and really began to go off into this subjective talk about affection and what God, you know, like how we're supposed to love. Of course we're supposed to love. Of course Jesus Christ love, loves. God also hates. The Bible says that. You know, he's angry with the wicked all day long. He hates the workers of iniquity. He hated uh, Esau. Uh, you know, if you, look, if you just read the book of Revelation, you'll understand the nature of God in his love and in his wrath. And so there is the goodness and the severity of God. The, the Father of Lights and uh, those th that last documentary really solely tried to highlight the goodness of God, ignoring the fact that God is holy. God is holy, and you cannot rob God of his holiness. So on this fourth installment entitled Holy Ghost, uh, Darren Wilson, he if you look at just the preview in and of itself, the first individual that is chronicled on the Holy Ghost preview is Lenny Kravitz, a secular artist. And then he's also traveling with secular music, or at least another secular musician known as 
Brian Welch, who supposedly gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ some years ago, went away from the band Corn and then has returned to the band Corn. And if you go to the corn.com website, K O R N, you go to corn.com website, they are still promoting all of their old music. So now you've got a guy who professes to be a Christian and they are still promoting all of the old music that they used to promote, still selling the albums, still getting. Uh, the royalties from that and still performing performing the same music if you look at their present music uh, and they are making music off of their latest album entitled Paradigm Shift it's still depressing it's still godless they've got one track called Love and Meth as in methamphetamines it's still if you listen to that music it's still going to drive you into committing suicide they're still rocking the, 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 the metal motif, the death motif, the darkness motif. But yet these are the people that Darren Wilson puts in his film to represent the Holy Ghost. To represent the Holy Ghost. Darren Wilson has put them in this fourth installment entitled Holy Ghost. And that is dark. It's, it's irrationally dark. Uh, the Holy Ghost, God is holy. There's a major difference between heaven and hell, and the image of and the imagery of heaven and hell. So, where is this originating? Well, let's talk about. I want to uh, list about ten things, and then I want to get right into what Romans 12, 1 and two state. Very, very important. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Father, works to lead men to Jesus Christ. All right, and since the Holy Spirit works within people, he's not visible to the to the naked eye. Jesus was visible to the naked eye. So you know what Jesus wants, you know what Jesus said, the Holy Ghost, he may he's, he, he's speaking through me. He may he may speak through you if you're a born again believer. He may speak through a child. And so the, so so he does not come to show himself. He comes to show you the Father or the God of creation. But he, he comes to distinguish that God through the Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost directs us to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's, he's only visible by the things that he does in those who have been filled or moved, influenced by him. The Holy Ghost does not work according to his own will. The Holy Ghost does not work to promote his own name. The Holy Ghost does, the, his name isn't even the Holy Ghost. He, he, he's, you know, you've got Father, Son, Holy Ghost, these three are one. So the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God in the, in, in the person of who God is. He's the Spirit of God. You've got the Father, who's the Spirit, the Son, who's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who's the Spirit. These three are one. And so he doesn't work to promote himself. He, prom he works to promote the Son. The Father promotes the Son. In the Son... We have the fullness of the Godhead in a human body. So I don't have to make a film about the indiscriminate Holy Ghost who remains indiscriminate and undistinguishable or indistinguishable for a reason because they want you to see the Son. They want, that's, who, that's, that's who God promotes. He promotes His Son. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. After the Holy Spirit comes upon him, he wants us to look at the concrete Jesus, not, not, the, un, not the invisible God anymore. God, is, God became visible for you and I. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Any film about the Holy Ghost that does not willfully represent the biblical personhood, image, message, and power of Jesus Christ is of another spirit. And I believe the Holy Ghost wants us to know that. That's why he allowed the preview to first to show Lenny Kravitz first. Because it should be a red flag to those who have what the Holy Ghost gives, which is the discerning of spirits. Why would we promote a godless entertainer just because he might have a certain perspective on the Holy Ghost that we might feel is relevant to a film. You wouldn't do that. You don't do that. You don't promote godlessness to promote godliness. It's, it's a paradox. It's a contradiction. Jesus Christ grants access to the Father and the Holy Ghost. So I can go right through Jesus. If I want the Holy Ghost, I can go right through Jesus. I've got to go through Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will redirect me back to Jesus once he fills me. Rather than remaining obscure, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. In His name, the name of Jesus Christ alone is supreme in God's work among us. Spirituality that is absent of the message and methods of Jesus Christ is false. 
all spirituality, all religion that does not bring us into the into the person and the nature of very Jesus, the biblical definition, description of Jesus Christ, it's not true spirituality in the holy sense. It's unholy. Faith in God cannot be pure without repentance. And that leads me to this part here in Romans chapter 12. Now, let's just talk about the fact that in John, Jesus said the Holy Ghost would not speak of his own accord. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. The Holy Ghost will not speak of himself. He will show you what belongs to me. Jesus is saying this. And he will, he will, reveal, he will reveal me to you. So why are we emphasizing the Holy Ghost? Well, because Jesus Christ has too many parameters. One of the ladies in the, in the Holy Ghost film preview said, what if we took God out of a box? Listen, God is in a box. Uh, let me just tell you something, just in case you didn't know. God is in a box. That box, his name is Jesus. God is in a box. Jesus is the box. He is, a, he is the can of God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So if you want to know what God looks like, you better find the Son. You better find the Son. You better read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John if you want to know who God is. If you want to know who God is and how he looks and what he says and what he wants and what he does, Jesus Christ is that. He is God in a box. So let's not guess. Let's not follow miracles. The reason why the Bible says a wicked and an adulterous generation seek after a sign is because it's saying that, like let's say a woman meets a man. The man has money. And the woman likes the man for his money then that means that she'll go after anybody else with money. So let's say we like the signs and wonders of God. It's okay to have the signs and wonders of God. It's okay for the Lord Jesus Christ to be doing all kinds of things in your life, according to his word, miraculous things, abundant things. No matter what it is, as long as he's doing it, it's great. The problem is, what happens when that's what I become focused on and emphasize and enamored with? What happens when we allow the gifts to validate what we're receiving in a person as opposed to the message? What is the message? Is Jesus being specified, articulated, glorified, or are the signs being glorified? Just because you have a sign, does that mean you have the message of Jesus? If the signs don't accompany the message of Jesus, the personhood of Jesus, if we're not being conformed to the personhood of Jesus and we've got the signs, you better check those signs because the Bible says in the Old Covenant that God will allow certain signs and wonders, certain signs and wonders, so as to test the hearts of the people who are looking after the sign. So guess what? Um, if there are signs that are coming to pass, whether it be prophecy, or whether it be some spiritual occurrence, be it a healing, or the manifestation of some other thing, God will give that to the adulterers because he knows, he know, to the adulterers because he knows where people's hearts are. And so we better be mindful that God will give you a, a false sign if that's what you're looking for. If you don't believe that, read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. How the Bible says that God is going to send people strong delusion who already want to believe a lie. Jesus is God in the box. If you don't want the Jesus, if you don't want the, if you don't want the guy, the guy. The Father sent to be the Savior of the world. If you don't like his words, you don't like his image, you don't like his message, then you don't like the Holy Ghost. And we can't make movies about the Holy Ghost without emphasizing Jesus is the Jesus. It's about G J E S U S. That's his name. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you give your life to God. That's what the description is. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, that means I am separate from the world. That means if I'm Brian Head Welch from Lenny Kravitz, I've got to leave the world. I don't want any more royalties from the godless, demonic music I used to make. I've got to lay it all down. I've got to abandon that, it cut the hair. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to sanctify my tattoos so that the, the demon spirits I opened my body up to when I got the body mutilation, that they no longer have access to me. Lord, forgive me for all the souls I led astray, the people I led into hell, the people I led into alcoholism or drug abuse or suicide. Lord, deliver me from that, please, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I've got to hate sin. All you that love the Lord hate evil. The issue that we're having here is that we're teaching faith in God and spirituality apart from repentance. That's the issue. The Word of God says repent and believe. Jesus himself stated that. That's why you, we've got to make movies about the Holy Ghost and not Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said some specific things. But I could blame the Holy Ghost for anything. 
I can blame the Holy Ghost for what you just said, for what I just said, for what that guy said, for what that guy said, for what Lenny Kravitz is saying. I can just blame the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Jesus said some things. And we need to make sure that anything that we respect as the Holy Ghost lines up with the stuff that Jesus said and Jesus did. And Jesus told us that we would do by the Holy Ghost who testifies of Jesus. He says... We're supposed to give our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. So I can't be in the band corn. I can't be cool with Kanye West. I, I, I just can't. He's a friend of the world, and if I'm a friend of the world, I'm an enemy of God. Now, I can minister to him. I can preach to him, but I can't be his friend because a friend of the world is an enemy of God in that respect. I'm not saying that we can't have associations or connections. I'm saying that I can't be seen with him as buddy-buddy because he's on his way to hell and he's leading millions on, on that path with him. And the Word of God tells me, what fellowship does light have with darkness? What are we doing here? What's really going on? What are, what are our motives? What fellowship has light with darkness? What, what communion has the, has the people of God with an infidel? See? See? You see? Paul said that by the Holy Ghost. But now you've got modern day miracle workers, many of them legit, many of them illegit. Most of them are illegitimate, many of them legitimate. Straight up Holy Ghost filled men who are not. Uh, uh, and then there are some who, just, who, are, who are like wheat, but they're like chaff, but you, or wheat and tear. You don't know who's who. That's ungodly. I should know who's who. I should know. I should be able to look at you and know you love God. I shouldn't be able to look at you and wonder if you love God. I shouldn't be able to think that you love the devil. If I think you love the devil because of how you appear, because there are parts of my culture that hate God, and you're like that part of my culture that hates God, that's wrong. And you're leading a double life. You're living a double, a double message, and you're messing people up straight up. You're presenting that which is holy and profane, but you want people to look past the outer appearance? No! When Jesus comes, why doesn't he have horns and blood dripping from his mouth as a vampire and say, listen, don't judge it by the outward appearance? You know Jesus does have blood on his clothes. It's the blood of his enemies, though. So what we're dealing with here is, 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 a, is a conforming to the world. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that, uh, that good, what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The only way that I can represent Jesus is if the Holy Spirit renews my mind. So you want to talk about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost renews the mind of the people. So uh, understand this that there is going to come a greater measure of deception. I do not advocate the movie uh, Holy Ghost, and, and uh, I don't advocate the, the, the things that are going on in that respect. Uh, it's dark out there. It's dark out there. And, and the Lord is going to give people over to a reprobate mind who don't love the truth. The Bible says that, that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Is God gracious? Is God merciful? Absolutely. Is God truth? Absolutely. If my, if my grace contradicts his truth, it's false. If my truth contradicts his grace, it's false. But how do I know? Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the stuff that Paul and Peter and James wrote, and Jude, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's how I'm going to know. That's how I'm going to know. The Holy Ghost is going to reveal that to me. If the Holy Ghost is going to point to Jesus, he doesn't point to himself. When you have a person who's overemphasizing what the Lord said should be underemphasized, the Holy Ghost is not shy and bashful. He's not hurt that you're not talking about him. He wants you to talk about Jesus. So I'm not offending the Holy Ghost because I call on Jesus. I'm not offending the Father because I call on Jesus. When I'm talking to the Father, I'm talking to him through the name of his son, Jesus. The Father is perfectly okay with that. When I'm talking to the, to the Son, I'm also communicating with the Holy Ghost. So, the Bible says the Lord, Jesus Christ, is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So I have liberty, but I don't have lawlessness. That's what I don't have. I can't be lawless. I can't act crazy. So, uh, ask the Lord to protect you and to guide you. Because, again, it's getting dark out there. And a lot of people are going off into heresy. And into error, please don't be one of them. If you're ever in the West Palm Beach area, please, you're welcome to come and visit us. We're at 1750 Osceola Drive. 1750 Osceola Drive, West Palm Beach, Florida, 3340, 3409. 
West Palm Beach, Florida, 3409. Uh, you also may donate into Jesus Ministries. We'd appreciate every gift. And I thank God for all of you who have been sowing into the ministry, spiritually and financially. We, we greatly value your support. You could sow, you could plant here uh, financially. We're at 17143. That's 17143. P.O. Box 17143. West Palm Beach, Florida, 33415. P.O. Box 17143. West Palm Beach, Florida, 33415. This is David Williams signing off. We'll talk again.